Hey everyone, welcome to episode 48 of The Independent Agent. Justin is wearing a plain gray t-shirt. You like saying t-shirt Again. Because you used to be so inspiring. I know. You know, you had all these catchy little phrases and all that. And Lockdowns got me down. I mean, why, why can't you just keep buying them online and have different ones? Well, I bought different shades of colors. Different shades of gray? How many shades of gray do you have? <laughs> 15. <laughs> Any who. Um, What's our drink today? We're drinking a gimlet. A what? A gimlet. Um, I feel like it's like, like an English name. Wouldn't it be like an English or Irish or something? Something like, like a Pim's Cup or something? Like a gimlet? Gimlet, giblet. Sounds like it's from like, like Kim Zelda Gibbler. or something. Maybe I'm thinking of like a, Are we going to just keep connecting things? What's that game? Whatever. Um, Gin Rummy. What? Gin Rummy. What? No, what does Gin Rummy have to do with this game? <laughs> he, it was Alcohol. Game. Um, okay, so it is two parts of gin, uh, three-quarter part lime juice, and three-quarter part simple syrup. Um, as usual, I go easy on the simple syrup. And are we using Ryan's gin? Yeah, we are. Well, it's not his anymore. Well, it still is. He's got an urn out. Yeah. Not bad. Not, yeah, not terrible. I mean. It could be colder, you know? Yeah. It's, you took so long to go pick up your Ultra. that. It, yeah, well, it's it's not bad. Um, if it was really hot out and it was colder, I could see drinking it. Yeah, it needs to be like ice cold, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it tastes too syrupy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jordan, first question. Most of the commercial lines producers in our agency are generalists with accounts in their book representing a variety of types of sizes and uh, just businesses in general. As we bring in new... That's produ- not what it said. You want to read the question? <laughs> different sizes and types. As we bring in new producers... You started like, like ripping. Like. <laughs> Derailed. As we bring in new producers, we do want them to be niche-focused. What are the most important things for us to know as we help producers choose and develop a niche? Uh, I'd say one of the obvious ones is, do you have a market for said niche? Um, Does anyone have any experience in the industry in that niche? I would say it's actually, as long as you have access to markets, it's probably pretty easy to start a niche. Um, Even if you don't know anything about that niche, there are so many different uh, avenues you can go with, with coverage or, or, you know, like a mentorship. If you've got someone else in the organization who knows about them, Um, plenty of online videos, like you name it. There's so many ways to to walk into a niche. So to to learn about that, that's not going to be that difficult. I don't think Um, it'll take experience and practice, but that's just like anything else. But you need the markets. Um, and I think the, the other question is just, how are you going to market to them? You know, what's, what's your selling proposition? Why are you different? I mean, if it's just brute force, that works all the time too. So you just got to think about that perspective of how am I going to get in? How am I going to convince them that I'm the expert in it? Because when you say you're a niche person, you got to say you're the expert. Uh, what's the old adage, you know, it only takes one account of something to be an expert. So, um, those are what's coming off the top of my head. In Goodman's, we tend to be experts even without that one account. I am I am an expert at most things you'll ask me a question on. And, and here, I think, is the key. If someone asks you a question about something, it kind of makes you the expert because they thought high enough to you to ask that question. So Unless they were asking the question to see if you knew what the hell you were talking about. I, I only view it the way, way I like to. Um, in my expertise and your expertise. So, um, in your professional expertise, when someone asks you a question, they want to know, they want to know it's a self-fulfilling type of thing. So, uh, I think that when you have, uh, a niche you want to develop, it's one, do I have markets? Like he said, uh, but also how am I going to attack it? Uh, where can I get the leads from? What what strategies can I, I utilize? What uh, resources will the agency uh, provide in that capacity to actually go and, and get that? Or are you just going to re- rely on cold calling? Um, 
I think those are important aspects the agency has to focus on. I also think you have to find yourself, in a lot of cases, uh, if it's a niche, a program. So some type of MGA, MGU out there who already has a prepackaged program. So that way you're not getting yourself into so much trouble. You can have a little less experience and really rely on them. They've got one program and and just enough for you to say everything's neatly bundled up for me to, to go after this account and they've thought about some of the things I haven't uh, especially as you're you know you're cutting your teeth you're cutting your teeth that's a weird term isn't it yeah I'm curious the origin of that I'm always curious on the origin of um, like the one on like rule of thumb you know that, that could be a whole podcast where all this stuff comes from yeah I mean there's a lot of them um, I'm not going to talk about the rule of thumb one because it's pretty crappy, uh, but you guys can you guys can go look it up. Uh, so or, wasn't that from was that from? No, that wasn't in Snatch. That was in um, Boondock Saints when they talked about that. Yeah. Wasn't that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, that so, so good. Anywho, Both of those movies are fantastic. They were. Anywho, <laughs> uh, so you sound you like Doctor Seuss. Anywho. <laughs> The attention span today is <sighs> off the charts. You can tell it's a Friday. Um, with the producers, it's equally important to have a, uh, a roadmap long term. Where do you see uh, that niche going? I see your eyes gazing at me. Um, <laughs> Just like, like usual. I Like a uh, perfect example. For a while, we looked at starting a separate niche. I wanted to look at uh, home health care. And what we found after talking to a few of these groups was they kept getting like acquired. Yeah. So you've got these home health care agencies, which great premium, easy to go and write them. But these, uh, I don't know, these larger groups just kept acquiring all these small home health care things. So you'd invest all the time and develop the niche just to have it acquired. And so um, you know, it'd like be trying to target insurance agencies that keep getting acquired. You have to find something that has longevity, um, that you're looking around the corner and says, will this be here sustainably, especially if I'm gonna put so much effort there. Uh, aside from that, in general, you're gonna perform better if you're operating inside a niche. Everyone, I think, knows that by this point. Uh, just make sure you line up the, that there's enough resources going to that area. And if you're gonna have multiple producers in that space, that each of those producers knows that they have enough prospects so that it can be a successful niche. Um, if there's not enough to feed everybody, then then the rest of the, the office shouldn't be focused on that specific niche. It should just be you know to that one individual. Yeah, I mean, remember the time when we started the trucking niche? So you guys that time. probably know that we do construction. Um, and we, thought, okay, well, one of our producers in Texas, um, or he was from Texas, and he did trucking out there. And so he kept talking to us about it for a long time. We're like, great, let's do it. Premiums are high, good commissions. And we put together a marketing strategy. We got a ton of opportunity, worked on a ton of business. Um, we knew what we were talking about because he had the experience on it. And we were able to market well, and we were ha- having all these opportunities, but we couldn't even come close to competing Uh, and it was because just the markets no one would give us market access Um, so I would say that's critical just like Justin said if you can find someone convince them you know to let you into a program or something but it's also that's that's always tough right that's a lot of time is it chicken or the egg you know they they, you want to get into something and the program says great once you have that once you have the book of business you can you know start working with our program I'm kind of bitter right now because, I mean, especially knowing some of the trucking agencies we do, we could have just been a lead generation source and just pumped those over to them. You want to be a lead gen business? Well, since we had it and it was already developed and we invested the capital, all we would have done is just... We can turn it back on. And sell it like 20... If there's anyone who wants to pay us for trucking leads, I got to just turn the machine back on and I can probably send you 50 to 100 trucking leads a month. Um, what are we going to charge for it? I don't know. I mean, probably 40, 50 grand a month. That sounds reasonable, yeah. right? Let's let's do a five-year contract, 150 a year. Done? I like that. All right, great. Are we um, <laughs> did we finish that question? I think so. Okay. I am the owner and operator of a small agency with eight other employees. 
As we continue to grow, I feel it is time to have another person help with some management responsibilities. I'm not sure if I should promote from within or hire from outside. Any insight on characteristics I would want to look for in an individual that can help me lead the agency? Um, so the real question is, if you only have eight people, why do you need that other person? If it's, it, are you intending to continue to own the agency and produce like our dad did? He was the main producer in the office. And so he needed that additional person. Uh, if you don't intend to be producing as much, then I don't see a need. But let's assume you want to keep producing business and that's a, a driving factor in it. And you just don't or, have or it could be a want. Right. Yeah. What if what if they just don't want to manage people like I don't like managing people. <laughs> so I have to do it. He's great at it. He's very empathetic. He cares. Mm. I care, too. Just not enough to sit down and have them pour their hearts out to me once a month. We all have our roles. Yep. Um, uh, but, but anyway, so if I was going to do something, here's the challenge of from within. From within, you have the staff saying, hey, we were equals, and now I view you on a different tier. We've talked about that on a previous podcast. And then also, if you hire from outside in, um, you find somebody who is uh, really maybe not meshing with your culture. There's a lot of different things that can go wrong. There all are also interim steps. So, um, uh, for example, Kelly Donahue, Agency Performance Partners, does a great job in, involved in operational things and sales and helps agencies work towards that goal and is really an outsourced solution to that problem. And, and she comes in and really consults and says, hey, here are the deficiencies. Here's how we get it going. Here's how we put KPIs in place. Uh, so it, it doesn't have to be even either or here. There's a third option where you can leverage some outside help um, and, and for example, she is a very well-known commodity and has done some dynamite things for agencies. Uh, but if I don't think commodity would be the right word then. <laughs> I'm doing my best. It's a Friday, folks. It is a Friday. Um, You're not allowed to say that. Olivia got mad at us for saying it was a Friday last time. Well, she's taking off early this Friday, so she doesn't get to get mad at us. I didn't hear that. Did we approve that? She went to operations, which was me. <laughs> Whatever. So, <laughs> anywho, I did it again. Um, I, I think you, when you're doing this, I would tend to look from the outside in if you want a manager. Um, but I'd first make a whole list of what you're trying to accomplish. What we have made the mistake of in the past is going hey, this is what we need because this is what's frustrating us right now, but we didn't think what we might not might have as a need in the future. So first write down what you're wanting to not have to deal with yourself anymore and think as your agency grows over the next two or three years, what other capacities could be needed so that you hire for that as well or from in the organization, that person doesn't just fit the need now, but for you in three, four, five years down the road, uh, we've been guilty of very short-sighted thinking um, on, on both companies of ours in, in the past. Yeah, and um, I'm sure I've said it before on here. Uh, I'm one right. of my mentors says- You said I'm right in the past? Not where I was going. But. Um, say, always says, you know, what's the highest and best use of your time? So you should be thinking from that angle, like what is the highest and best use of your time for the agency? And a great tool that I've done a few times is one of those, you know, quadrants, right? Or on the left side, it's, you know, I like it. I like doing this on the right side. It's I don't like doing this. And then the top section is I'm good at doing this. And the b bottom is I'm bad at doing this or I'm poor, whatever grammar. Um, Grammar would probably be my I'm bad at it and don't like or whatever something like You're that. You're better than you think you are. I know I most things in life. And with Grammarly, I'm awesome. Yeah, I know. Um, but a, a great starting spot would be things that you're bad at and you don't like doing. You can you need to start moving that to someone else, right? Um, and the things that you're bad at and even still enjoy doing, you should probably move to someone else because you're bad at them. I I am not a fan of trying to make yourself better at something that you're not good at. Let other people do that. Um, 
just like Justin, what, didn't you start taking like some other online accounting course or something like that? I did, but, and, and I think it was good because I need to really, you know, understand things. But for me to then say like, if I want to go and try and take over what you're doing, we both know that's a very bad idea. Right. Like, it's good, hey, Justin, so as brothers, we know that, well, one, I know you would always do right by me. I've been cooking the books for so long, I, man. I know. It would be, it's so, if you've been cooking them, we're, <laughs> we're in trouble. Cause, we're both comfortable with the situation. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in general, that's just never going to be a skill set of mine. I mean, even when you said to me, right? Why in the world would we ever need algebra? And and or, sorry, when I said that to yeah, you, I was like, <laughs> sorry, I reversed the story there. I said that to you, and you're like, no, no, no. I use algebra in these formulas. They're all algebra, and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I use it all the time. Yeah. So um, so why you don't want me, who my little hamster wheel in that area will never get it down. So yeah, I mean, just like. Managing people, you don't want me managing people. No, actually, I would like. I that. would just stare blindly to, at them and just wonder why we're still talking about I, certain issues. I, you know, the you could tell my wife loves me when when we have to talk about these things. But I also think there's a difference too, like in your personal life, what people like consider you as a, a listener, like a family, right? And then somehow, like other people do, and they they perceive you do a better job. I don't think I'm a great listener anywhere. False. You are a great listener. What's it? You look good. You feel good. What's it? And dar- doggone it, people like you. What? There's a saying that there, somebody, maybe it was a Saturday Night Live skit. My memory is faulty, but he had to repeat it over itself. And doggone it, people like me. Yeah. No. Okay. No, I mean, yeah. Such, such an amazing way to end a podcast episode. Um, hey, Justin, doggone it, people like me. <laughs> Trying to boost that little ego. Yeah. Let's get you up there. Yep. Uh, I think that's it. Any? Do we give them any insider characteristics? I I would say the biggest one is find people who like Mama Cheryl always said can anticipate the need. Mm-hmm. Like you want people who are just thinking for you. Just it'll take some learning curve, but then they understand how you work and they go, okay, this is how I want it done, and then they just take it by the reins and go like that's you need someone who's just going to leave you alone yeah and and if we you know if we can be candid somebody who is going to want to take on challenges like feed me more problems and then comes to you with solutions right because what the last thing you want is effectively middle management who's going to say well what do you think Right, I'm not paying you to say what do I think. I'm paying you to solve said problem. Right, and someone who is perfectly fine that you're going to be disappointed in a decision they made on the spot, and they're just going to say, "Hey, you hired me to make these decisions." Someone who has that chutzpah. 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 We gave a characteristic. We did. We did. All right. Uh, anything else you got for today? Not not for today, but um, I'm excited for next week. Oh, we going crazy next week? We're going to get wild next week. Get nuts. Nuts. All right, everyone. Uh, Well, thank you for listening as always. Hope everyone is having an enjoyable entry into fall. Drink your pumpkin spices and cheers.